Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we celebrate this day, the first Saturday of November, in honor of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And we offer reparation to her Immaculate Heart for all indifferences towards her, which is the same as saying towards Jesus Christ, our Lord. Today, I wish to reflect with you on the virtue of faith, faith that was also a central message of Fatima. In fact, if you remember the first prayer taught by the angel of Fatima appearing to the three little shepherds in 1916 was this one that we often pray also during this day. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love thee. I beg pardon for all those that do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, do not love thee. My God, I believe. This is the first movement of this beautiful prayer. We can ask ourselves, why is the angel teaching the three little shepherds this prayer about faith? And the second one is about reparation to the blessed sacrament for all the offenses and sacrileges against it. Would this prayer already envisage what would happen in, uh, later on, especially in our times where we face a loss of faith, a tremendous loss of faith. What is faith? The Catechism teaches that by faith man completely submits his intellect and his will to God. With his whole being man gives his assent to God the Revealer, the one who reveals himself. Sacred Scripture calls this human response to God, the author of Revelation, the obedience of faith. Faith is obedience, ob audire, to hear carefully as our Lady did at the Annunciation. She obeyed the word, she conceived, therefore, the word, first in her mind and therefore in her womb. It is faith, it is then this obedience. But it is also necessary to purify our intellect and will to be able to believe in God. If my soul, your soul, is still governed by the senses and by emotional feelings and judgments, or by things pleasing exclusively my flesh, it, your flesh, it is hard to believe in God. Faith, true faith, requires the death of my senses and of all my carnal inclinations. And this, especially in times of distress and social calamity, such as this present epidemic, pandemic, when it is even more difficult to decipher God's presence and God's will. True faith is not blind uh, renouncing to reason and to discern prudently, but it is the, it should always be naked, that is to use an expression of Saint John of the Cross, or pure, to call it with Saint Louis Grignon de Montfort. Faith should be naked, that is without this uh, judgment coming from my senses, my feelings, my emotions. 
It is a judgment which is grounded on God's will, on God's word, eternal word. True faith is not compromised with our desire to find always a propitious God, the one who helps us whenever we need him, so that once the danger is over, we can also forget him. This is normally the way we believe. We believe when we need something, and then we forget about that faith. This is carnal faith. True faith is rather to seek God unceasingly, even when unbecoming events and hardships contribute to hide him more. It might sound surprising, all this at first, but true faith is nothing other than a continuous search for God through all that conceals, disfigures, destroys and so to speak, and highlights him. Yet, it is only by negating what God is in the way common to all beings that we can come to know what he is in a singular manner. There is a French Jesuit who lived in the 17th century, Father Jean-Paul de Cussade, who expressed all these necessary requirements to properly believe in his uh, masterpiece, titled Self-Abandonment to Divine Providence. I wish to quote a small paragraph from this Self-Abandonment to Divine Providence book, in which there is the principle of true faith. Father de Cussade says thus, the life of faith is nothing other than a continuous search for God through all that hides him, represents him badly, and so to speak, destroys and annihilates him. It is certainly the reproduction of the life of Mary, Our Lady, who from the stable to Calvary remains attached to a God whom everyone else struggles to recognize, abandons and persecutes. In the same way, men of faith pass through and beyond a continuous succession of veils, shadows, appearances and deaths, as it were, in which each thing does its best to make the will of God unrecognizable. But in spite of this, they fulfill and love the divine will until the death of the cross. They know that the shadows must always be abandoned in order to follow this divine sun, which from its rising to its setting, however black or heavy the clouds that cover it may be, illuminates, warms, and makes shine with love the hearts of the faithful who bless him, praise him, and contemplate him in all the points of his mysterious orbit. End of quote. This uh, naked, pure faith corresponds to what Saint Louis Grignon de Montfort, who is a contemporary of Father de Cussade, uh, calls pure faith, full of contradiction and repugnance, which the servant of Mary lives every day, leaving to the heavenly mother, sovereign queen, the clear vision of God. It is the Virgin who with her own supports the faith which lacks the sensible perceptions of her devoted Son and who supplies in times of darkness. This is therefore a question of participating in Mary's faith. We can have a share in her faith, especially if we are consecrated to Mary. Demonfort writes thus, 
in the secret of Mary, paragraph 51. Leave, O poor little slave, leave to your sovereign the clear vision of God, the transports, the joys, the pleasures, the riches, and take for yourself only pure faith, full of listlessness, listlessness, distractions, boredom, aridity, and tell her, Amen, so be it, to all that you, my mistress, do in heaven. For now, that is the best that I can do. It's a beautiful program of life. To believe with Our Lady's face, leaving to her uh, the contemplation of God and taking for us this aridity, this difficulty in believing. But we are not led astray because we have a clear faith, Our Lady's own faith. And then, how is instead our own faith? Are we ready to embrace God's will until our spiritual death of the cross? Or are we eager to abandon Jesus as soon as things turn in a way that is unpleasant? Are we in this present difficult time still believing in God as church, as Marian people? Or are we rather believing in ourselves? in the all-powerful science and technology. Who is our God? Are we not seduced by the sole power of the vaccine that has almost become a quasi-dogma to be either exalted as the panacea for all problems or to be rejected as the most subtle plot for the numbing of consciences. Just reflecting on this epidemic pandemic caused by COVID-19, we can certainly say that our response of faith as pastors and faithful is inadequate, too human, too NHS focused. The image that is so imprinted in my memory is the fact that in most of our churches, holy water has disappeared and right in the holy font, the sanitizer has been allocated. Is there not a possible way to spray holy water in a COVID-safe mode, as we do with the gel? Health protocols have got their indisputable precedence over our moral capacity to still judge this situation and to be respected in a moral stand that may either accept the vaccine for its moral licity, as after all confirmed by the Congregation for the Faith, or refuse it for a matter of conscience. The latter should of course not be a pretext to fall into libertarianism, but a genuine ethical, moral choice, especially in relation to abortion. Between those in our church, perhaps in our parish, who have received the vaccine and those who have not, there is no dialogue at all. They are enemies. They seem to be eternal enemies. Why? No charity is reserved to this affair, splitting us more than previous heresies have done in the past. But vaccine is not a dogma. What is relevant in a moral judgment about vaccine is man's moral action. Man's moral action, choosing the vaccine. My dear brethren, where is our supernatural vision in all this? Where is God in all this? It is all about ourselves, about vaccine. Where is God? 
What is here? I search for the will of God above all other things. It seems that we are so advanced technologically and even morally that God has no role to play in this moment. We do, in fact, as he did not exist. Our faith is very much carnal and human. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope. You remember the prayer. You now understand why that prayer taught to three little shepherds. We should start to believe in God rather than believing in ourselves, in things of this world. We should start to believe in God with a pure faith, able to see him and to see beyond this epidemic. <clears throat> faith sees beyond. We should be able to see beyond this uh, event permitted by God to purify us our conscience. Can we say that this pandemic is above all a chastisement of our own intelligence, too proud to see beyond itself and to leave some space for God's intervention? Everyone has got his own idea about this pandemic, even scientists. In this confusion of our minds, like a new Babel Tower, in the Church, especially in the Church, we are asked to go back to faith and to start to believe, to believe in God. We need Our Lady's faith to share in her faith. By her faith, the Son of God was formed first in her mind, conceived with her obedience of faith, in her mind, and then formed in her womb as a baby. For her faith, God is man and is with us. May her fiat uh, be spoken today for us and within us. This is faith. Her fiat mici secundum verbum tuum. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.